Hi everybody, welcome to our vodcast on biochemistry. In this vodcast, what we are going to discuss are the basic principles of biochemistry and the main organic compounds that we have in our body. In order to get these organic compounds that we have in our body that our body uses, we usually ingest the materials for these from our foods. So that's why having a healthy diet is pretty important to your health. So let's take a look at these organic compounds that we're going to talk about. All right, so biochemistry. Before we get into the specific compounds, let's just go over the basics of biochemistry here. So first of all, the study of the chemical reactions in the body is called biochemistry. Biochemistry is dependent upon the atoms that make up our body. Remember, atoms are the smallest particles of our body that make up the matter that make us up. Now, atoms are particles that are made up of subatomic particles called protons, electrons, and neutrons. And based on the number of protons that a material may have, that'll form a specific element, as you may remember from the table of elements in previous science classes. Now, elements are materials that cannot be broken down naturally into a simpler substance. However, they can combine with other elements to form compounds. So when you have two or more elements bound together, you form a compound. And one example of a compound is water. And water is a combination of elements such as hydrogen, and oxygen. So when you look at the empirical formula of water, you'll notice that it's H2O, meaning two hydrogens to one oxygen. Okay, so that's our basic overview of biochemistry. Now let's get into the specific organic compounds that you are going to be responsible for. When we take a look at our organic compounds, you'll notice that we have four organic compounds to talk about. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Now, all of these are called organic compounds because they contain two major elements. An organic compound is any compound that contains carbon and hydrogen inside of it. Now, most of our organic compounds here will also include elements such as oxygen and nitrogen. However, in order for it to be organic, it must have both carbon and hydrogen in it. So let's take a look at our four organic compounds that we have here. The first one we're going to look at are carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates are essentially the sugars that we have in our diet. Okay, so here's some basic characteristics about sugars. One, sugars always end in O-S-E. Okay, so they always end in the suffix os. So when you read an ingredients label on a package of food or a bottle and you see glucose, fructose, sucrose, maltose, what you're looking at are the names of sugars. So oses are essentially any sugar that's in that food. In addition to that, sugars always have a hydrogen and oxygen ratio arranged in a two to one ratio. So there's two hydrogens for every oxygen. So when you look at the empirical formula for glucose, which is C6H12O6, you'll notice that there are 12 hydrogens in it, and then there are six oxygens in it. So it's a two to one ratio. And lastly, sugars are important to our bodies because we use them for energy. So we can either use it immediately for specific tasks that we're carrying out, or if we have too much sugar in our body, we can actually store it in certain places. Now, when we talk about carbohydrates, the main carbohydrate we're going to, going to discuss is a carbohydrate called glucose. And this is known as a monomer. A monomer is a building block. If you think about the prefix mono, mono means one. So this is going to be, going to be one single sugar. And another way that we call single sugars are called monosaccharides. Mono, again, meaning one, and saccharide, meaning sugar. So when we talk about a monomer, we're talking about the building block, the single unit of a massive chain. And that single unit is going to be glucose. Now, when we talk about polymers, polymers are the opposite. Poly means many. So there are going to be many of these glucose stuck together. And they're going to create a long chain. And these polymer chains for sugars and carbohydrates are called polysaccharides. So again, we have poly, which means many, and saccharides, which means sugar. So this means we have different chains of different lengths that have different amounts of glucose in them. And some of those polysaccharides include cellulose, which is found in the cell walls of plants, starch, which is found in our foods and used as stored food for plants as well. And then we have glycogen, which is found in our bodies when we store excess sugar for use later. Now, to be able to identify what a carbohydrate is, the glucose molecule looks like this over here. So it kind of looks like a, a ring with a whole bunch of oxygens and hydrogens sticking out of it. The points of the ring are typically going to contain 
carbons. So there would be a carbon here, carbon here, carbon there, carbon there, and carbon there. But they don't put it in this drawing. And our sixth carbon is located up here. So whenever you see this structure here, this is a carbohydrate specifically called glucose. However, when we have a polymer or polysaccharide or a long chain of them, you'll see plenty of these shapes stuck together like you see in the image here. And this image here shows you the three different polymers that we talked about just a few moments ago. That just about does it for carbohydrates. So let's move on to proteins. Now proteins they have specific characteristics too. Proteins are things that we use in our body and they are important because we use them for growth and repair. So the reason why you grow is because proteins are being used to help you grow to make hormones that help your body build more cells and, and so forth. Also, repair. If you tear a muscle, you break a bone, you tear up some skin because you scraped it, you need proteins in your body to help repair all that stuff to make it better and heal it up. Okay? So here's some characteristics of proteins. One, they are made up of amino acids, and that's going to be their monomer, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now, when we take a look at an amino acid, as we have right here in this picture, there are different sections of the amino acid, and this will make amino acids easy to identify. First of all, an amino acid has an amino group, and the easiest way to identify the amino group is looking for the nitrogen and two hydrogens sticking off of it. So here it is. Here's your amino group right there. It has the N and two H's or two hydrogens. Also, you have a carboxyl group. The carboxyl group is what makes it an acid. And in order to identify a carboxyl group, you want to look for the prefix CO, C-O-O-H. All right. And this is the carboxyl group over here on this part. So if you see a molecule that's got nitrogen on one end and a carboxyl group on another end, you're most likely looking at an amino acid. However, there's a third variable that they have here. They have a side chain. Okay, the side chain is the, called the R chain. And the R chain is what makes the amino acid different from another amino acid. Because we have different amino acids in our body, they all vary because of this one section right here. Okay, so the R chain is the, basically the variable group. So that's the amino acid. Now, as I said, we can use this for growth and repair of cells. And also, when our body really, really needs it, it's our final source of energy. So when our body kicks into a starvation cycle and it's run through carbohydrates and fats, we then start breaking down protein. So those are some of the basic characteristics that you need to know about proteins. Now, our proteins, as we said, have building blocks or monomers, and those monomers are amino acids, as we see here. And then when we link a bunch of these amino acids together, just like we linked a whole bunch of glucose molecules together to form a, poly a polysaccharide, what we have is a chain called a polypeptide. So whenever you see the word peptide, okay, that is going to be your proteins. So a polypeptide chain is a long chain of amino acids that are linked together. A third organic molecule includes the group called lipids. Now our lipids are also known as fats. So fats include oils, waxes, and cholesterols, as well as fatty tissue that we have in our body. So here are the main characteristics of lipids and how you can identify them. First of all, Lipids are usually large molecules with long carbon chains. So as you can see here, we have these long carbon chains sticking off this molecule here. All right, so when you see these long carbon chains, it makes up a big molecule. So that may be helpful in thinking that these long chains, these big chains, are going to identify a lipid for you. Also, when we talk about lipids, you have two groups of fats. You have saturated fats, which are unhealthy fats. These are the ones that are bad for you and clog up your arteries. What happens with saturated fats, how you can determine a saturated fat from the healthier fat, which is called an unsaturated fat, is that saturated fats usually will solidify at room temperature. So if your mom, okay, unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. So you're talking about your oils like olive oil or avocado oils. Those are healthier for you. And then also fats are used as stored energy and for cell structures. So to build in our cell structures, which we'll talk about when we get into cells, our cell membranes, the regulatory structure of the cell that allows things in and out of the cell, basically the bouncer of the cell, they're made of lipids. So we need lipids in our diet to build those things. Also we use them as energy. 
So essentially, when our body runs out of carbohydrates, our body starts to break down fats for energy. It has high yield, but it also includes a lot of energy being used to break up the fats. That's why when people diet and they don't eat as much or take in as much glucose as they should, their body starts to break down the fat in their body, and then they tend to lose weight. Now, when we take a look at the monomer for lipids, there's actually two parts to the monomer. Okay, They include fatty acids and glycerol. So if we take a look here, these long carbon chains end in the carboxyl group, C-O-O. And as you can see, that OH is missing because of a process called dehydration synthesis that we'll talk about later. When you see that C double bond O, that's usually a good indication that you're looking at a carboxyl group. This is your fatty acid. And then this is the glycerol molecule that it bonds to. So again, when you see this type of structure, this one structure here with like three tails coming off it, you're looking at a fatty acid. All right, so typically there is no particular name for the polymer, like proteins have polypeptides and carbohydrates have polysaccharides. We just basically refer to the large molecule as a lipid, okay? And again, the lipids include the fats, oils, waxes, and cholesterols in our body. And the last organic molecule that we're going to talk about is a nucleic acid. All right, nucleic acid, you've probably heard of before, and these are the characteristics that they include. One, nucleic acids are made up of three groups or three main parts. There's a sugar and phosphate that make up a backbone, and then there's a nitrogenous base. So if you take a look at the structure over here, you'll notice a nucleic acid called DNA. Here, you have your phosphate group, and then here you have that ring type shape again that we referred to earlier. Well, this is a sugar. Now, depending on your nucleic acid in DNA, this is deoxyribosugar, and in RNA, this is ribosugar. So you have your phosphate sugar backbone, and then you have your nitrogenous base that makes up the genetic code. These are your A's, G's, T's, and C's that we referred to when we, you learned about DNA before. This whole structure here is your monomer, or your building block for the nucleic acid. And this structure here is called a nucleotide. And when you bond all these nucleotides together and create this long chain on this side of the DNA and then another chain on that side of the DNA molecule, you start to create a polymer called a nucleic acid. And that's what DNA is. It actually stands for deoxyribose, which is the D, and nucleic acid, which is the Na part of that. And when we talk about RNA, it's actually called ribose, again named after the sugar, and then nucleic acid is the Na portion of that name as well. All right, well, this wraps it up for our four major organic compounds that you need to know, and I hope you found that helpful. Thank you for your time.